Hi, in this video we're going to work on the fifth application exercise called Hotels and Data Types. So let's go ahead and start it and wait for the project to launch. So in this application exercise we have two R Markdown files, so two separate exercises to work through. We're going to start with the type coercion one. And this is basically um, just a mini exercise where you can get a little bit more practice thinking about how R will coerce types of uh, variables um, when you put them into a single vector. Because remember that in a single vector each element has to have the same type, so it will make some decisions on your behalf as to what they need to be coerced to. So in the first vector, we have uh, the number one. So that is just a numeric. And remember, the, uh, the default numeric type would have been double and one L and C. So what we can do first is we can actually run this chunk of code where it will give us the types of each of the um, elements, a double integer and a character. So the question we want to answer is if a double integer and a character walk into a bar, what do they come out as? So um, there's no way that the letter C can be turned into a number. Therefore, my guess would be that R will turn all of these things into a character. And going through this exercise, you can then uncomment this chunk where basically we're looking at the type of the entire vector uh, once you have made your guess to see if you were right. And in fact, we are getting a character here. Let's move on to the next one. So in the next one, we have a 1L, a 0, and an A. And so we might want to first check to see where the first um, element is actually 1L, so an integer divided by 0 a double, what would that be? Uh, let's go ahead and run this chunk to give us some feedback. So we can see here that the type of 1L is an integer and a type of zero is double. And if you divide an integer by a double, we can also take a look at what that answer is. So you're dividing by uh, zero, you're getting infinity as the result, which would be what you would expect mathematically. And that is basically a double. And then finally, we are coercing it with a character. So once again, even though it was a bit more convoluted, we had some numeric value, a double and a character. And we know that when we have this, R is going to say, well, I can't make the A into a number, so we're going to have to go the other way. So the result of this is going to be a character as well. And if you're curious what that looks like, you can actually run uh, simply that vector and ask R to print out the result of this vector for you. So you can see it's infinity, but instead of uh, being the special value infinity, it's actually a character string with the letters I and F in it. The next one is one through three and then five. So one through three, basically this column operator is telling us uh, it's the numbers one through three, and R is not going to print out every single decimal space for us. So that's really coming down to be one, two, and three, the integers. And then we have a double after that. So we are uh, putting together integer and a double. And the results that we would get as a result of this should be a double again because we can't really make the uh, double into an integer without loss of precision but we can go the other way around the next one is the number three and then three plus as a character string so we have a double and a character and once again when we have a numeric and a character r is going to convert everything to character strings and here's the last one. Now we're looking at some more special values, an NA and a true. So remember that the type of an NA is a logical, and so is type of true, which is true or false. Uh, therefore, if I put two logicals together, there's actually no coercion going on. That's exactly what you would expect. You get a logical. Next, let's take a look at the uh, hotels and four cats exercise. We're going to be working with the hotels data set that we've seen previously. And the instructions tell us to first knit the document so that we can see the visualization that we want to improve. And then we're going to manipulate this fa one of the factor variables in our data set in order to make a better visualization. Um, let's scroll down to see what this visualization looks like. Okay. 
So let's take a look at the x-axis here. We have arrival month, and on the y-axis, we have the mean average daily rate. So we're looking at on a monthly basis how expensive the hotel bookings are. But on the x-axis, my month starts with April, and then August, and then December, and then February, which doesn't make any sense, except it makes sense if they're alphabetically ordered. So by default, this is a character variable and R will order it uh, in alphabetical order. But obviously, for our purposes of looking at what happens throughout the year, that makes absolutely no sense. So we would like to reorder the levels of this variable. Um, so if we think about it, we have a data frame called hotels. One of the columns variables in that data frame is called arrival date month. And I want to change how what is happening in that column. I want to change its type from character to a factor. And when I change its type to a factor, I also want to impose a particular level ordering for my factor. So because I want to manipulate my data frame or mutate my data frame, I'm going to use the mutate function. The variable that I want to mutate is arrival date month. And you can see that I'm doing it right after I call my data frame. So I said, start with the hotels data frame and let's do this data cleaning first. And then you can do everything else that you need to do. So I didn't even look to see what's happening down the line in my code. I'm just saying before I get started with anything, I want to go ahead and manipulate this particular column. I want to do that and the question is now how do I go about changing the levels of a um, factor. So we have a hint here where you, we can take a look at the reference page for the four cats package. So we can pop that open real quick and remember that the four cats package has a list of functions that uh, start with the um, that start with the uh, prefix FCT and um, they allow us to basically reorder levels. Um, but in this case, I want to make the ordering just manual, right? I want to be the person who says start with January, then February, uh, March, so on and so forth, as opposed to say order it based on the magnitude of, an, of another variable. So the function that I want to use is the FCT relevel function. So factor relevel, where we reorder factors by hand. And we can see that what we need to do is we first feed it the name of the factor. So in this case, that's going to be arrival date month. And then we string along the uh, levels that we want in the order that we want them. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that how you um, spell those levels needs to match exactly how they appear in the data frame. So capitalization needs to match and the way you write the words out needs to match. So I can see that my months are start with capital letters. And in addition to that, um, they are the kind of the full month names as opposed to Jan, for example, I have January or as opposed to Mar, I have March. So we're going to use the FCT real level function. The variable I am re-leveling is arrival date month. And then I want to say January 1st, then February, so on and so forth. And then whatever comes out of this, I'm going to just pipe into the next line of my um, pipeline. I could type out all 12 of these and you could watch me make a bunch of spelling mistakes doing that and it's a bit tedious. So I'm going to give you a quick hint. Um, R has some objects objects stored for easy access. For example, if I type letters, that's basically the letters in the English alphabet in uh, lowercase. If I do capital, that's those same letters in uppercase. And another one that I have available to me is month name. So month names are uh, the 12 months ordered in the order that I want them. This is stored as a vector and spelled exactly the way that I want them, how they appear in my data frame. If I wanted this uh, shorter names, that would be month ab for abbreviation. But what I need here is this month name vector. So instead of me typing out these months one by one, I'm simply going to use that. So let's go ahead and knit our documents one more time to see how this reorders our x-axis and see if that's actually uh, good enough for our purposes. All right. Let's take a look. Uh, sorry that you're watching me do this. 
Okay, here we go. Uh, indeed, now we have our months in the order that we would want them, January through December, and we're seeing things like in resort hotels that are denoted by the green, the mean average daily rate goes up around summer months, which maybe makes sense. That's when you would stay in a resort hotel for a family vacation or something. And we can also see these like increases as we go from November to December, because those are going to be the kind of the Christmas holidays or something like that. Okay, now let's take a look at this stretch goal. It says change the y-axis label so the values are shown with dollar signs. So that's uh, the dollar sign and then the number 80 over here as opposed to just the number 80. It says you will want to use a function from the scales package. So let's go ahead and take a look at the reference for the scales package. We haven't uh, said much about this package yet in the course. This is uh, something we're going to cover shortly when we talk about improving our data visualizations. But what the scales package is really useful for is um, it will allow you to uh, change how the scales, so the axes or the fill aesthetic or the color aesthetic of your uh, plot are displayed without you having to touch the data. So one way we could have uh, gone about going from the number 80 to the character string dollar sign and then 80 would be to manipulate our data, but that's probably not what we want to do. I'd like those uh, average daily rates to stay as numeric for other things I might do in this analysis, but for the representation on my data, it's nice to have the dollar signs. So we can see here that there are a bunch of ways we can label our plot. And the one we're looking for looks a lot like this $100 one. So it's going to be the label dollar function that we're going to use. So the label dollar function by default has a prefix of the dollar sign. You can change this to be something else. There's also a more generic label currency, say if you wanna use pounds or something like that. So here, this label dollar by default has the dollar sign prefix. And how do we go about actually using it? The way we go about using it would be to say scale, um, and I want to deal with my Y axis, so that's Y. The Y axis is continuous, so I'm going to do uh, scale Y continuous. And the labels in here, the labels in here are going to come from um, the uh, modification of the labels using the label dollar function. Okay, so I get an error. Could not find function label dollar. Why am I getting this error? Whenever you get the error, could not find function, your first instinct should be that I never loaded the package that has this function. In fact, the label dollar function was in the scales package, but we did not load this. So I go back up to the top of my document and say library scales. You can load the packages wherever you want in your R Markdown document. Uh, well, you can, but you may not. I recommend that you actually put them at the very top in this load package. Um, chunk just so it's very clear as soon as you start up this document which packages it's going to use so now let's take a look at the uh, visualization that we had in fact on the y-axis we're seeing the um, uh, values represented with the dollar signs right uh, be beside them now one other thing i would like to do here which is not part of the task but while we're here i might as well walk you through it which is going to be alluding a little bit to what we're going to talk about next week in terms of making better data visualizations so at the on the x-axis we now have our months uh ordered the way we would want them to be ordered however we can also see that they're overlapping a little bit and then looks a little bit messy so what are some things that we can do in order to avoid that obviously we could have abbreviated the data but that would be manipulating the data to begin with so i'm going to choose another way and what i'm going to choose to do is to dodge these uh, labels so that they're not overlapping on each other uh, the way we can go about doing that is so this time I'm going to manipulate my x-axis, so or the, the scales on the x-axis, so that's scale x, and it is a discrete variable as opposed to a continuous variable this time, so that's discrete. And one of the um, arguments that you can have in this 
um, function is the guide argument. So here we go. We want to dodge them by two. Okay. So let's go ahead and knit this, take a look at the output, and then I'm going to show you how we might have uh, come about um, this answer. So we can see here that the months are now dodged and they're not overlapping on each other, which I think makes it a lot easier to read this plot. There are a variety of other things we could have done, but you might be thinking, how would I ever know that this is what I needed to do? So let me go back and now walk you through how would I have ever known? Um, what I want to basically do is fire up Google and ask ggplot2 axis labels maybe dodge or overlap would be another thing that we could look for. So I would start uh, going about uh, reading through here um, how to avoid overlapping labels in ggplot2. Let's see if this gives me uh, something that I might uh, like. Go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Um, so it looks like there is one other option that we could have used where it actually emits some of them. But the one we did end up using is this one where this was being dodged by three. So what I did was to dodge them simply by two. So it's not necessarily always going to be the case that you know exactly how to do something. Um, or that we've taught you how to do it. Sometimes you go about thinking, okay, this is something I'd like to get done. Is there a way that I can do it? Um, and it is possible that you might find out that the answer is no, but trust me, that is much less likely than finding out that the answer is yes and that you need to just try out a few options for trying to get your code to look right.